I'm fucking tattooing right now. I'm in uh, I'm I'm tattooing this fucking guy that that fucking flies me down to Florida to tattoo what? him. Look at this what? place. It's like a dome. It's what? nuts. Yeah. That's crazy. I know. He's got all this money. It's awesome. I'm mostly inspired by the people that I, I surround myself with usually. So like there's a lot of tattoo artists I see online and stuff and I love their work and everything. And those people obviously inspire me, but I feel like the people that I'm around that I get to see do it in person a lot are the people that really inspire me to try harder. I'm just surrounded by so many creatives in fashion, in music. I love g -Eazy. he's a good friend of mine and, and being in the studio with him and you know, cooking up songs, like I get to kind of be part of that process and see how it works. And it just inspires me when, when he's out there just, you know, creating music. But I would definitely say my father when I was young, not having like toys be the main thing that he would push towards me, you know, he always just handed me a pencil. And because he was a, he was a architect and contractor, you know, when he came to America, he always just pushed me to draw. And he was always designing homes. Uh, he had paintings that he had around the house that I loved. Even Danielle, you know, she's 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 a model slash like, you know, getting into work in, in healthcare. So just like watching her work hard and hustle and, and grind, you know, like I just want to surround myself with people that I can, you know, just vibe off of their energy. There's two people that really influenced me a lot. And, you know, the guys that I apprenticed under, you know, and in Puerto Rico and in California, they just really hooked me up and they were really some of my you know, favorite people. Let me see if I can give you another answer though, because people are not gonna really know who they are, so. My number one influence, I would have to just be honest. I would have to say Nico. I always have to say Nico. I know mean, it's like cliche as hell to say, but the first person I had ever seen do a color portrait was Nico. Nico was one of the first Instagram tattoo artists that like came out as like the the realism person. Before I tattooed, I was, that's what I would draw. I would draw, you know, portraits of people. That's what, that's, that was like my thing. But I, I had never realized or built a bridge that you could tattoo these things. He was like the first person you saw on Instagram. I was like, oh shit. So many people came behind him. So many, some people are actually probably better, but he was that first person that I caught on Instagram and was like, damn. And that like made me really want to take things to the next level. I like bought his his like how to's. Um, I studied his, his Instagram and all his pages and like it became like a thing for me to like try to get as good or better than Nico. There's just tons of influencing in, in my part. Uh, my favorite artists like Nico, Mashkoff, they are great artists, uh, Val Tattoos. There's, there's just a lot of, it's really hard to say which one's my favorite. Mark Ryden. Uh, I've loved his paintings since I was a kid and I didn't even realize that I was looking at his paintings on album covers and then I finally discovered him and I was like, what are these beautiful, monstrously big heads with these incredibly creepy, static figures? Um, so that really spoke to me. I'm like, I like that their heads are huge and also that they don't look like they move very much. I relate to that. I mean, definitely like Bob Marley and like people who really like uses their art to make a change in the world. It would probably be Travis Barker oh, because, because of the way that he did, took music and he took music into clothing and he took his clothing into restaurants and all that thing. Like, he was the first very heavily tattooed person that I saw in business meetings and stuff like that growing up on Meet the Barkers and stuff like that. So it may be kind of cliche, but for me, it's definitely him, like hearing him say he got tattooed on his knuckles because he wanted to give himself no other choice but to do what he loved. That resonated with me and like, just, uh, he was the first person I saw that was like me that was doing all these different businesses and still kept his art at the forefront. Yeah, that was a good one, bro. I love when it's like no rules. I love like, it's not like, oh, he has to be like this or this or that, or like, oh, we put this logo on this and sell this for this much. Like, I like when it's just like, just a creative freedom there. I also trying to make sure that I never put myself in a box so much so that I would, you know, feel limited with my own creative freedom too. Like, even though I'm a tattoo artist, I do, you know, 
creative direction and like other things as well and modeling and other things so I think it's important as an artist to like be free. It's weird with me like I get a lot of my influence for the imagery that I make as, as an artist through music you know it's not no, it's not necessarily looking at another artist's stuff and that inspires me of course that does as well but for me it's all like the image that a song you're listening to or the mood it puts you in you know the image that it puts you the image that it puts in your head for me like when i'm organically being myself as an artist it's all about what i'm surrounding myself with and typically that's in the form of music it, it, it changes and you know it, it's across medium too because i feel as influenced by like industrial designers as i do by tattooers as i do by even some musicians because sometimes it's about an attitude that you sort of just like soak up like their creative radiation and you're like you know what Trent Reznor is not a visual artist, but I think I just get down with anything that he's done. I read Nick Baxter's book, Sharp Focus Realism in Oil. Uh, I read it once. The thing changed my life. Like it, it made me, it made me want to do better as a human. It made me want to do better as an artist. Uh, it gave me confidence to be the artist that I wanted to be. You know, because somebody that I respect so much as an artist and looked up to so much, like was writing words for me to read, I could fully connect with that on on a, such a huge scale. And I'm sorry, like I've never met the man, um, but he f changed my life with his one book. I think that I read a lot of comics books growing up and um, comic books were definitely one of the things that that really just inspired me to do art. You know, I thought, I just saw those pages and I would be like, wow, this is amazing. I was really into uh, the Predator versus Aliens. <laughs> I was really into that, man. Like Predator versus Aliens since I was a kid. And then like, I, had a, I still have a lot of Aliens comic books. To just to, It was just awesome. And I just loved them. It's probably a tie between either Mark Ryden or like 1940s uh, cartoons where they're they're in black and white and they have like noodle arms and they're always like doing weird shit with their body that you don't expect. So right out the gate, you're unsettled by them because their heads look like they're disconnected from their big balloon bodies and then their arms are just doing like weird noodly stuff. I love 1940s like Fleischer uh, cartoons are amazing. I love me some Betty Boop. Um, just the style of all of that. And then if you start getting deeper and deeper into like Fleischer cartoons or UBI works, they have some really creepy cartoons that they want to show you. You can look them up on, on YouTube. Like, um, uh, the Pincushion Man is one of my all time favorites. It's this amazing cartoon where a man, a pincushion man, is trying to murder an entire town full of balloon people, which, is his nature. He's a pin cushion man and he lives adjacent to a balloon town. This was poor planning. As far as like the zoning board of balloon town goes, they're culpable. People who like just by their art can make people just feel better. Like I go by the witch doctor so I'm a healer at art. Like I said, I do a lot of cover up tattoos and stuff. So I'm trying to also incorporate that into my work. Like how can I be healing with my art? How can I have a healing purpose? We all have healing powers. It's just like, how do we unlock them? Like, what is your healing power? How can we tune into that? And I feel like the more we can tune in into our healing powers, the less we have to worry about like not having a purpose in life or not having a job or not all of these things because we're all here meant to heal each other, I think.